Yo, this is insane. It just feels like nothing can just be good. There's always someone or something fucking everything, right? And I'm saying that today because remember how we talked about the VA benefits for burn pit victims? Well, according to a new report, there are allegations that a handful of wealthy corporations are illegally siphoning off that money for themselves. Which for those of you that missed that news because your life does not revolve around this show, how fucking dare you? The US military used to burn all its trash from bases abroad in giant pits with jet fuel, which you think was obviously a bad thing. And it was, it would smother nearby service members in toxic fumes that caused a long list of medical conditions, especially cancer and respiratory issues. So in 2022, Biden signs the PACT Act, vastly expanding benefits for victims of burn pits and other toxic exposure. And the big news this week was that on Tuesday, he announced that over a million claims have been approved so far under the new law. Now, usually that means one of two things. Either one, the vet applied for benefits all on their own, or two, they got help from a veteran service organization or VSO. Like for example, veterans of foreign wars or disabled American veterans to pick two well-known examples. With those being nonprofit groups that have been officially accredited by the VA since the 1950s and are required by law to provide assistance free of charge for initial claims. But now there's also a new group of kids on the block offering to do the same exact thing for a hefty price tag and with none of the certification. With Washington Post actually identifying as many as 100 unaccredited for-profit companies that make hundreds of millions of dollars helping veterans apply, charging anywhere from $5,000 to $20,000. And their clients signing contracts that bind them to pay a one-time fee equal to five times their new monthly disability payment or increase. Which is wild because literally a federal law prohibits exactly that. But notably, back in 2006, Congress removed criminal penalties for that law, effectively defanging it and either way, these companies also argue they're just basically doing educational or consultant work with their clients ultimately submitting their own claims, so they're not actually breaking the law. But that argument seems to be contradicted by the industry's own advertising, which pitches their services as a substitute for the traditional VSOs, promising a higher chance of approval and accusing both the VSOs and the VA of failing to meet veterans' needs. And to be fair there, you know, they've kind of got a point. Where the VA has long been criticized for putting vets through a bureaucratic slog, delaying the process and ultimately denying legitimate claims, all of which the Biden administration has tried to improve and it's had some success. With, like we talked about, the approval rate for PACT Act related claims reaching an impressive 75% now. But in its effort to speed up the process and expand outreach, the VA has found itself straining to accommodate all the new claims. Right? Even after bringing on over 11,000 new employees to deal with the workload, it's still struggling. With officials also telling the Post that training fell short and the staff have worked mandatory overtime most months. Also, the training manual for toxic exposure cases has been revised multiple times, causing delays and inaccurate decisions. None of which is helped by the fact that the agency still relies on an outdated processing system requiring manual work. So as of April, there was a backlog of more than 300,000. We've seen at least one Gulf War vet giving the for-profit company that he hired a positive review, with him saying that he paid at $5,000 and got his disability rating boosted from 30% to 90%, and adding that they did more for me in six months than I did in 18 years. But notably, this is others are much less grateful for the service that they receive. With, for example, one saying, it looks like they're throwing you a lifeline when they're just taking advantage of you. They also have current and former employees from the companies themselves accusing them of prioritizing profits and volume over actually helping vets, saying they make unrealistic promises and devote minimal time to individual cases. With one former coach who quit due to ethical concerns explaining, I was charging veterans $20,000 who I potentially spent 45 minutes on the phone with. Even calling his former employer a veteran mail that outsources most contacts to contract employees in the Philippines. Also, some vets have alleged that these companies have harassed them for payment even when they settled their bills and decided to file claims on their own. Which is also why it's not shocking that many have sued these companies, alleging they charged excessive fees and used deceptive trade practices. With notably law firms, accredited claims agents, and even the Texas Attorney General joining them in the courtroom. And now you also have the VA saying it's open investigations into almost 40 unaccredited companies since October of 2022, with it also sending cease and desist letters to about two dozen of them. And we've even seen New York, New Jersey, and Maine banning or restricting for-profit claims companies and similar bills are pending in at least five other states. And a very big thing is that on the federal level, lawmakers have actually introduced a bipartisan bill with backing from 44 state attorneys generals last year to restore the Justice Department's authority to seek criminal charges against the firms. But a very key thing there is that within months, the industry then formed a trade group led by Trump's former acting VA secretary, with it immediately dishing out campaign contributions and sending an army of lobbyists to Washington, which apparently worked because the bill has not yet come up for a vote thanks to some key GOP lawmakers. In fact, what we're seeing is they're now trying to push policy in the opposite direction, with Republicans introducing a bill last year that would create a pathway to accreditation for the industry and capping fees there at $12,500 for each claim. But in the meantime, bets are losing their hard-earned benefits not only to these corporations, but also to scammers. In fact, from 2015 to 2019, the FTC got over 160,000 fraud reports from vets, with the median loss for veterans from fraud standing at 44% higher than other civilians. And this is part of the reason why I feel so 
defensive and and fucking infuriated for our vets. Because right, put your fucking political beliefs to the side. This is one of the most exploited fucking groups in our country. They go off to fight how many pointless wars for politicians back home. They risk their lives. They get injured, traumatized, poisoned on their own fucking bases. And then they come home and they get stiffed by a stingy government bureaucracy. The, the government that fucking loves them so much. And as if that wasn't enough, they get exploited by vampire capitalism and victimized by criminals. And it's all just equal parts infuriating and heartbreaking. 